Sorry about that. What's going down next time? It's your boy Swisher coming back at you. You know what I'm saying? With my early morning thoughts. Man. It's been a minute since I did a video. Well, I'm not gonna say a minute. It's been a few days. And, you know, just letting some things unfold. <clears throat> and all that, you know. Shout out to everybody that's out. You know, back in Houston, you know. Man, it sucks what's going on with you no know, Hurricane Harvey, man. You know, shout out to you know Ed Huncho, you know my boy Sticky Lair, Ray Ray, man. I hope all y'all is safe and okay, man. For real. Also, hope y'all families are safe and okay. Now that that's out of the way, I want to talk about our our corner situation and. How things may transpire. And honestly, when you look at it, J. Joe's kind of a liability, depending on the matchup. Robert Nelson. Pardon me. Pardon me for that. Robert Nelson is a for show. You know liability trusting the clue is on the up on the up and up you know and that's that's a good thing you know but like I said looking at this this year and for what we're trying to accomplish I actually wouldn't mind Houston going out and entertaining you know say a Darrell Revis or you know, with Joe Hayden, or potentially both, you know, both guys on in their 30s, you know, good veteran, you know, you pretty solid veterans, you know what I'm saying? That, of course, they both aren't what they used to be, you know what I'm saying? But I look at it like, man, if they kicking the tires on J. Joe for this long, then you might as well, you know, bring in those two guys, you know what I'm saying, have, well, really, you only need one, and... I wouldn't go with Revis over Hayden. You know, I'm not one of those guys that, you know, oh, you know, you're Darrell Revis, you know, I I wanna sign you over this guy. No, I, I don't I don't believe in those type of things. You know, I think Joe Hayden is still, you know, productive and you pair him up with, you know, depending on how they wanna play it, you know, I would move really Hayden into the slot, and, you know, I let, you know, J. Joe and uh, Johnson work on the outside, but that's just me, you know, but seeing as how, you know, receivers are quicker and more shiftier, I might would have to go with, you know, Kevin Johnson in the slot, you know, and have Joe Hayden and um, J. Joe on the outside. Now, like I said, that's just a, a huge, it's, it's all huge speculation, but like I said, I would, I would take Joe Hayden over Robert Nelson. And they can sit there and hype him up all they want, talking about he's had a solid camp and all that good shit, but Having a good camp isn't going to produce a result when you covering a guy that's six two, six three that can out jump you. You know, you good technique don't save you from those type of things from happening. I mean, in some cases they will if you're able to get, you know, meet the ball, carry you know, if you're able to meet the receiver as the ball gets to him, yeah, you're able to make those good looking hits that, you know, jar the ball lose. But Outside of that, you know, it's it, we're thin. Like people think we're thin at wide receiver. Look at our look at our true depth at corner and at safety. You know, it's, believe it or not, man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Wouldn't be. Objective, you know, what I'm saying I wouldn't be objective to Houston using a first round pick if they 
were to salvage, you know, say something for her, sal I mean, Savage, if they were able to trade, you know, Savage, you know, for some picks, I would definitely, definitely go get a safety. You know what I'm saying? And Derwin James out of Florida State fits the bill perfectly. Now, the reason why I like Der Derwin James, he, damn, and I forgot that safety's name. Um, Taylor Mays, there he go. He reminded me of Taylor Mays, but could actually, you know, with cover, you know, actual coverage skills, you know what I'm saying? 6'3", I want to say about 220. You know what I mean? A nice athlete, you know, this kid has, you know, real high potential, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, if Houston does, you know, bust a trade with somebody, you know, for, for Savage, you know, I'm hoping that that pick is a decent one because, like I say, Derwin James on our Texans squad would be, we, we would really go from a, well, some consider our defense is great and others, like others, I consider my, our defense elite, you know. It has its holes here and there, but overall it's an elite defense. Now, adding a physical presence on the back end like Derwin James, I say you have, when you have a front seven that can completely dominate and apply pressure, you know, depending on what coverage are we in, you know, like I say, if he, if he's, say he's forced to cover a back out of the backfield, this is why I wanted Obi Melifonu so bad because, and I would have gladly taken Obi Melifonu over Zach Cunningham. Why? Because look at what happened in New England. And I, I just feel like that's, that, that learning curve is going to be a little steep for him, you know, when it comes down to, you know, trying to cover, cover running backs. Don't get, don't get me wrong. I think he will eventually get it. But, you know, that if they're expecting him to, you know, contribute early, then I, I'm just going to be honest. I mean, like any rookie in the NFL, this ain't mad, you know, he can potentially be a liability. And like I said, good teams take note of that. Now, if you'd had if we'd had Obi, I know for a fact that those those plays that Zach Cunningham got beat on for touchdowns, they don't happen. They one or either is, is either an incomplete or it's a tip ball that's probably getting ready to get intercepted. And that's the value of having these guys, you know, with length and range to them, you know. Low key and the Texans, they not coming out and saying it, but they're slowly but surely trying to emulate that. That Well, I'm not going to say trying to. They really have emulated, you know, that dominating Seattle defense, you know what I'm saying? They just didn't have the, the Legion of Boom, you know what I'm saying? That's what we don't have in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Front seven, we could really match the Seahawks. You know what I'm saying? Even that year when they had that championship, or well, no, I'm not gonna go that far. But you know, the year before that, before they ever had the championship run, and the year after they won, you know, Houston defense was pretty tight. Now, with that being said. If we can acquire, like I say, looking at how we have, you know, Lonnie Ballantyne, he, if he was on any other squad, most likely he would have been cut by now. But, you know, the Texas must see something in him in order for them to keep him around, which is a really good thing because, like I said, if you go and you get Derwin James and this year's draft, I, I would like those two you know, guys being safe, our safeties going into, you know, the next year. Also, man, like it or not, man, I would gladly trade Brian Cushion and say a fourth, a fourth round pick, you know, to acquire Bucky Hodges from the Minnesota Vikings. 
if you don't know who Bucky Hodges is, go on my YouTube channel and um, type in Bucky Hodges. It's the video that has the most views and all that on it. The dude is a physical freak. You know what I'm saying? At 6'7", 255 pounds. He ran a 4'5'7". So, you know he can vertically stretch the field. And like I said, at 6'7", that's a huge target. Huge catch radius. And for a quarterback like Deshaun Watson, who, you know, who's better equipped to make those touch passes, Bucky Hodges would fit with him perfectly. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I got for right now. You know what I'm saying? And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I'm out. Thank you.